Dan Tenenbaum has done a very nice job of um, describing Docker containers, many nice links to help us <clears throat> get started on our own for the purposes of um, enhancing reproducibility so that you can recover the exact computing environment in which an analysis was performed. Ease of use so that you can get a, a system together um, without dealing with um, uh, system dependencies and convenience for testing. Um, <clears throat> you can explore the images that have been set up following some of these links. <clears throat> uh, the installation through this Docker toolbox for Linux or for Windows or Mac uh, is absolutely trivial, so you can just visit that link and take care of that. Um, <clears throat> I've got, I've done that installation, and so I have this um, Docker Quick Start Terminal. Um, and when you run that, uh, you get uh, a new shell. And uh, we can say Docker Images here, and it will show that I've already got um, the develop base and release core. And as Dan indicates here, if you want to run uh, a different um, R that's provisioned with uh, other materials, well, you can uh, run the docker run command. So I'm going to do that here. Uh, docker run minus ti, and I want to do microarrays in a bioconductor base, uh, bioconductor release. So I'll type uh, bioconductor And the uh, it would be release underscore microarrays. And what Docker is doing here is uh, indicating that um, <clears throat> it's going to have to get some software, some binaries, <clears throat> to fulfill this uh, request. And um, I don't expect it to take too long to get the microarray um, uh, packages in place, but I'll pause just uh, for a moment and let that finish, and then we'll see exactly what happened. Well, I guess it's uh, a little more involved than I thought to um, be equipped to work with microarray data in Bioconductor. Uh, right now, we've uh, used up a good four gigabytes of my disk. Uh, it hasn't taken too long. Uh, I'm on a pretty slow connection, though. Um, <clears throat> and we can see that there's another three gigabytes uh, waiting to be downloaded. Or, well, a chunk of it is coming down. Um, so we'll pause it again, and um, I'll let you know what's going on uh, when those three gigabytes have, have loaded, and then we'll continue to... Uh, see what's in this uh, image. Well, we finished the pull, and uh, there it is. It started up R 3.2.3, and let's take a look at the uh, installed packages. Uh, well, there we are. Uh, as dot character, as dot value. It was surprising to me that there would be so many um, multi-gigabyte uh, image elements coming back down, but you can see that there are uh, in the microarray image 788 packages, and um, we'll just see. Uh, yeah, so alumina methylation is handled. Um, HGU, so there's a lot of annotation for um, Affymetrics microarrays. Uh, how about the, uh, the PD? Oligo is there. Yeah, PD mapping. So this is one of the uh, SNP chip um, uh, annotation packages. Uh, those can be quite large. So What's happened is 
Um, remember what we did here. In fact, I'm going to scroll all the way up so that we see exactly what went on. Um, Docker was started. We checked out some images. And um, we ran this command, docker run, asking for release microarray um, to start up R. <coughs> it was not able to find that image, and so it went and got all the necessary material to create that. Now, if I shut down R and run the same command, all of the images are already there. There's no need to do any uh, downloading and this uh, image is here on my machine. Now how much space did it take up? Wow! Um, <clears throat> close to um, 15 gigabytes uh, of software was brought in uh, through this um, demonstration. Um, let's just head back to Dan's documentation here. Uh, the images are stored in Docker Hub. We can take a look at that. Resource here. Now it looks as if they redirected. Sorry about these lines here. We're going to be done in a minute. Uh, we can look up Bioconductor. And now we see down here uh, release core, for example. We can click on that and take a look at the tags that are available. Many different images. Uh, these, I think, are um, just simple representations of the date uh, when the image was made. Presumably some bioconductor packages changed uh, in, in release and so a new um, Docker image uh, was created and um, one can go and request um, a specific uh, image with one of the Docker um, <clears throat> run or pull commands. Let's see, I also wanted to check what he comments on. The Docker files are in GitHub and let's just see what those uh, look like. Common. Uh. So what I wanted to do is just uh, have a look at uh, the Docker files and um, the documentation here is telling us do not edit files called Dockerfile. They're automatically generated from Dockerfile.in through the rake command. And what we can see here is the way in which um, uh, a Docker container is specified. These are Linux package uh, requirements for various things like the new uh, scientific numerical library. Um, <clears throat> and um, we're going to have uh, JAGs in this system and Java and so on. So um, we're probably going to inherit from some other uh, docker file and then extend to the docker file necessary for sequencing by adding uh, various uh, components specified here. So one needs to learn the syntax of this dockerfile.in, understand the rake utility, and then one is able to specify one's own uh, images for their own reproducible environment specification and recovery. So that ends my discussion of docker. I uh, hope you found it useful. And thanks to Dan Tenenbaum for setting all this up.